Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we have another transform section method video. Uh, this one's super easy and we're going to be talking about what to do when we have three different materials that are making up our section. Um, and the question goes as follows. We have a beam made up of three different plastics. One of them is PVC with a modulus of elasticity of 450 KSI. The exon or escon, whatever it's called, uh, is 160 KSI and we have bake light, which is 800 KSI. It wants us to determine the max bending stress in the PVC. So that's going to mean it wants us to find whatever the bending stress is in this very top fiber here. So the first thing we need to do uh, whenever we have a max bending stress problem is our end goal is to get a max moment to plug into this formula. So the first thing we need to realize is, okay, let's solve for the bending moment diagram. Uh, and that's going to be super easy because we have a symmetric beam that's symmetrically loaded with 500 pounds. Uh, at each of these symmetric intervals, right? So all that means is that we're going to have equal and opposite uh, support reactions of 500 pounds here and 500 pounds here. So that means our shear diagram is going to look something like this. We're going to have a jump of 500 pounds right here. It's going to come right back down to zero at this midpoint. And then once again, we have another downwards jump to 500 in the negative uh, on this end. And that's pretty simple here. Remember, remember uh, our rules for bending moment diagrams is the area underneath this uh, shear diagram is going to be equal to the jump that the moment diagram is actually going to be taking. Uh, in other words, uh, we have 500 times 3 feet. So that means we're going to have a triangular shape going from 0 to 1500, which is simply 500 times the three feet. Uh, and if you want to recall on bending moment diagrams, you can watch any of my previous videos on that. Um, this section zero, obviously no area. So this is going to maintain that constant uh, zero slope. And then we have the same thing happening on this side, except now we're negative. So we're bringing it downwards. That's going to bring it right back to zero. So from this, we take away that our max moment is actually 1500 and that's in pounds per feet. Now, the next thing we need to do is to transform everything in this section so that we can work with this formula because we need that moment of inertia value to be representative of a single material. So which material would be easiest to work with in this problem? I would think it would be PVC. So I want to transform everything into PVC so that in the end, I don't need to apply any modular ratio to this final equation. So let's see what that section is going to look like here. So now we see we have the section completely transformed all into the same material, PVC. And you'll notice that the areas of these shapes are changing. First thing, as always, we have to remember that the geometric properties of the section should be uh, the same given the moment of inertia that we're trying to solve for. So if we're trying to solve for the moment of inertia about the x-axis, then we can't mess with the height of these segments. So that's why we're retaining the one inch and the two inch uh, for each of these individual sections. The second thing that we need to see is that the B value is changing for each of them. So we now have these B prime values. And all that means is that we are simply transforming the shape into its equivalent area based on the relationship uh, for modulus of elasticity, right? Which is our N, the modular ratio. And the first one we're going to do is for E, which is being transformed into PVC. And what that formula is going to look like is we have E for the escon over the modulus of elasticity for the PVC, which is going to give us 160 over 450. And solving that, we are left with 0 0.356. Why does this make sense? This is so important to these problems. Why does this make sense? This value is lower than 1. So that means it requires less area than what was originally there for the S-gon. And that's because the S-gon had a lower modulus of elasticity. It was a weaker material relative to the PVC. Therefore, you need less PVC in place uh, for that replacement or that transformation. And that's the fundamental understanding for all of these transformation problems. And if you can understand that, uh, you can do these problems like with ease. Um, the next thing you need to do is do the same for the bake light as well. So we're taking B being transformed into PVC 
we have a very similar thing, except now it's going to be the opposite, where the Bakelite is a much stiffer material than the PVC. So we have 800 over 450, which is 1.778, which is greater than 1, meaning that you're going to need more PVC uh, in place of that Bakelite since it, uh, the original Bakelite was a stronger material. Now we can proceed with finding these B prime values for each of these new transformations. So the first one we can do is for the S gone. So if we do D, uh, B prime E, it's going to be the modular ratio that we just saw for 4E, which is 0 0.356. And we're multiplying it by its original length, which was 3 inches. And solving for that, you're going to be left with 1.068 inches and then you do the same for the bake light as well and you're doing a very similar thing 1.778 for the bake light transformation and that's three inches once again and that gives us 5.334 inches now the next thing we do is we have to find this neutral axis and that is using this formula where we're taking the summation of area times the distance to each of the local centroids for each of these individual segments over the cumulative area. And that formula is going to look something like this, where we first have this bake light section transformed into PVC. So we're using B prime as the width for that area. So we do 5.334 times the height, which is two. And that distance is going to be YB, which is one. We do the same for the next section. We have this transformed area, which is B prime E for the width, and that is 1.068 times the height, which is 2. And we're taking the previous height of this section, so we have 2 inches, and then we're going halfway into the centroid of this segment, which is going to be 1 inch, so 2 plus 1 is 3. And then the same for the PVC, which is not changed since it was originally uh, PVC in the first place, so we have 3 times one for the height and that distance away from x to this point is going to be two plus two plus half of one which is ultimately 4.5 and then we do all of this over the area so we have 5.334 times two 1.068 times two and three times one and that will leave you with a final answer for your neutral axis of 1.93 inches. Alrighty, now that we're cleaned up here, we can take a look at the inertia value for this transform section. And we're going to proceed with the parallel axis theorem. So we have 1 over 12, starting with the bake light. We have this B prime B for the width, which is 5.334, times the height, which is 2, and that's going to be to the power of 3. Now we add the area for that section. So 5.334 times 2. And now we need the distance between the neutral axis and this YB value. And that's simply going to be 1.93 minus 1. And that's going to be squared. On to the next part. Super easy. We do the S gone transformed. So we're using 1.068. And that's times 2 to the power of 3. We are going to be taking that area as, as well uh, times 2. And doing a similar thing, we now have 3, and we're taking away that neutral axis distance, which is 1.93 once again, and that's squared. And we do the same for the PVC, which is 3, the original width, which is unchanged, and that's the power 3. We do the area, and we do the difference in distance once again. So we have 4.5, subtracting 1.93 squared leaving us with a final number of a very nice 36 inches to the power of 4. Now we can finally solve for the max stress in the PVC. And we're simply going to be plugging into our formula. No need to modify it uh, with any modular ratio. First thing we plug in is our moment, which is the maximum that we solved for previously. So we have 1,500, and that's in pounds per foot. And since we're working in inches, we have to convert this foot to inch. So for every 12 inches, we have one foot, and that will cancel. 
And then we have the C value. So we remember what that is. That's going to be the distance from the absolute furthest fiber in this PVC to the neutral axis. So that's simply going to be 5 minus our neutral axis distance, which is 1.93. And then all of that is going to be over our inertia value. This is in inches, by the way. Um, so we have 36 on the bottom, inches to the power of 4. And simply solving for that, we are going to be left with a value of 1,535 inches or pounds per inch squared. And converting that to KSI, we have 1.54 KSI. Boom. Oh, that's it for the problem. Um, super easy once you get the hang of, you know, understanding what's going on with the transformation. It's all super easy plug and chug from there. So I uh, hope this helped. Thanks for watching.